This week on Inside the Headset, we are featuring former Northwest Missouri head coach and college football Hall of Famer Mel Churchma. In this episode, Coach Churchma highlights the importance of building relationships, discusses what it takes to turn a struggling program around, and gives insight on his experience working as a collegiate athletic director. But first, a word from our sponsor. The Werner Ladder AFCA FBS Coach of the Year Award is the oldest award given by the American Football Coaches Association and embodies the nature of respect more than any other award in the game of football. Every coach who believes in the power of football to build better men knows the value of the game. Only a tiny minority of coaches can scale the heights to achieve true excellence. To make the climb, great coaches know they need help from a great team of players and assistant coaches. It's one of the primary reasons Werner Ladder signed on to sponsor the Werner Ladder AFCA FBS Coach of the Year Award in 2019. As a world leader in ladder manufacturing, Werner knows what it means to support a champion's climb to the top. Werner Ladder AFCA FBS Regional Coach of the Year voting opens November 15th and runs through December 3rd. Active AFCA members will receive an email from the AFCA offices with voting instructions the day voting opens. Once the five FBS regional winners are selected, those are the five finalists for National Werner Ladder AFCA FBS Coach of the Year, and that voting starts in the middle of December and ends the week prior to the 100th Annual AFCA Convention in San Antonio, Texas. For questions regarding Coach of the Year voting, please feel free to contact Vince Thompson at vince at afca.com. Coach Churchman, how are you? Well, I'm good, Mario. Uh, happy to be with you. No, no doubt. Well, uh, it's always my honor when I get the chance to sit down with uh, a coach that has such a historic coaching career. Uh, you know, you've been in it for a very long time. Uh, I've seen a lot of different things. You know, what has led you? Uh, what led you initially to be a football coach? When did you want, when did you know you want to be a coach, and uh, what pushed you that direction? Well, Mario, I, uh, I grew up on a farm in South Dakota. I uh, went to a country school, um, so uh, I never really played any organized uh, athletics until I was a freshman in high school, a small high school. We had about uh, 100 kids in high school. Uh, we actually played, uh, at that time, we played eight man, and uh, my senior year, we played a combination. We played eight, uh, four eight-man games, and we played, played four 11-man games, so that was uh, quite an experience, but um, I don't know... Uh, I, I've always, for whatever reason, I've always loved athletics. I, I loved competition. Uh, and then I was blessed in high school to have a, uh, uh, you know, a young, energetic coach. John Wessling was my high school coach, uh, small high school. So we had three sports, football, basketball, and track. Uh, he was our coach in all three sports. And uh, I just, uh, I loved his enthusiasm and his passion for, for each of those sports. And uh, that's what I wanted to do. It's always great when you're a, a player yourself and you find a coach that maybe uh, had had that impact that kind of nudges you in the direction that you end up going. So that that's that's always great, you know, um, kind, of, kind of passing the torch through him. So that's that's awesome. Now, while your career has been filled with many accomplishments, a lot of winning, um, we would like to know what what's been the most rewarding aspect of of, of coaching for you over all these years. What's kind of been your motivation to continue going? Well, without a doubt, for me, it's just the relationships you build. It, it, coaching is a special uh, – you, you develop a special bond uh, with your student-athletes. And, uh, you know, I experienced that. Like I said, I experienced that with my high school coach. I, I had that bond. Uh, um, he was like uh, – I had a great family, but he was like a second dad. And uh, um, just uh, – I, I, I modeled myself after that. Uh, and I thought, uh, and, and I worked with some great coaches that, uh, you know, that was the, that was their thing, you know, is to develop relationships with your, with your, uh, student athletes. And for me, that's by far the most rewarding, uh, now that I'm retired, it's really rewarding because I hear from a lot of those guys and yeah. almost on a daily basis. I hear from one of them or two of them and, uh, uh, you know, we keep active, uh, in, in their lives, lives even now. Hey, I, well, it's amazing to hop on and you're, and you're, you're kind of talking about these different things and you have yet to mention 
national championships or, or the winning percentages or anything like that. It's just been strictly about the relationships and the the development of the young people. Um, you did win the uh, division division two national championship three times. I mean, that's absolutely. <laughs> crazy uh j just talk to us a little bit about some of those national championship seasons and you know what they meant to you and, and why they were so special well um you know I, I go I, I go back a little bit uh when I was the offensive coordinator at Northwestern College in Orange City Iowa uh we played in the national championship game twice uh, uh I think uh, 1979 and then 1983, and we won it in 83 uh, as, as, as an offensive coordinator. And then I, you know, got my first head coaching job in 1984 at, uh, at Austin College. But uh, when I came to Northwest Missouri in 1994, 1994 was my first season. Uh, um, it wasn't a good situation. Uh, we uh, we went 0 and 11 in 1994, uh, and uh, uh, 95 we we were. We were able to win six games. We were six and five, uh, six and three in our conference. And then, uh, you know, two seasons, three seasons later, we were uh, 1998. We were 15 and 0 and national champs. And uh, uh, that was, uh, you know, to see uh, those kids uh, that redshirted in 94 uh, were seniors in 98. And to see what they had accomplished, and it wasn't just them. Uh, some of the guys that were seniors in 97, 96, and 97 had contributed and made that, uh, helped us make that transition but for for those uh oh maybe a dozen guys that uh that redshirted in 94 and then uh standing on uh you know the victory stand at the national championship game going 15 and all that was uh that was really rewarding coach i i actually didn't know that part i didn't know that you you took over a rebuilding program and you were 0 and 11 that first year I, so i would imagine whenever you take over those unique unique situations i've I've coached for um, you know a little over a decade. I spent some time with Coach Barry, and I've had the opportunity to have some of those traditionally bad jobs or tough jobs. And uh, you know, what, what were some of the things you, you you felt like you had to clean up uh, to to get that f such a fast turnaround? Well, uh, you know, I, we had to change more than anything else. We just had to change the attitude. Um, uh, they were uh, when we got there, uh, and in and in 1994, I think. Probably one of the things that uh, that describes it better than anything else. One of my true freshmen in '94 was uh, came off a state championship team uh, the year before in high school, and he told me in our in our postseason meeting, we, I had individual meetings with all the players, and uh, I had made the decision to let some of the older guys go at that point. And uh, Matt said to me in our meeting, "Here's a freshman looking at me," and he said, "Coach," he said, "You." He said, I'm really glad you're letting those guys go. And I said, well, tell me why, Matt. And he said, well, he said, remember our third game? And uh, we had gotten blown out in our first two games uh, in 94. And in nine, our third game was with Missouri Western, which is a rival uh, right down the road. And we got beat. It uh, wasn't too bad. <laughs> One of our closer games, we got beat like 21 to nothing. And he said, uh, Coach, he said, I was in the locker room after the game. And he said, I was sitting there. And he said, I was really, he said, I was in tears. He said, I, I just felt so bad. And he said, one of the older players came up and patted me on the back. And he said, hey, Matt, get used to it. That's what Bearcat football is all about. So <laughs> that kind of tells you where we were at <clears throat> and what we had to <clears throat> what we had to change. And uh, <clears throat> the only way you change that, uh, you, you have to you, you have to get a lot of new people. And, and we did that and we did it with younger kids. Now, in 95, we did have some transfers, but not not a lot. I think we took. Uh, six or eight junior college transfers and and they were uh they were great because they didn't they hadn't they didn't relate to the 94 team the 011 team they you know they came in and they thought we were going to go uh, 11 and 0 right away uh so we that helped that change that mentality and then the younger kids that that we had recruited just really bought in and some of the kids that were there uh, some we had some great uh, young men that were sophomores and juniors that bought in, and uh, they became our leaders, and uh, that's how we got it turned around. Coach, that's impressive. Congratulations again. I know like twenty years overdue, but congrats. That's I, the turnaround makes it that much more special. Now I, I can imagine uh, as you're changing that culture, uh, changing the attitude, changing some of those players, probably from an administrative side there's probably some things that need to be a little bit different for those kids to have success in that program. And so you've actually, uh, you know, I know this is post that situation, but in, in, in 2013, you actually took over um, 
uh, as as an athletic director over there at Northwest Missouri State, what has been on the administrative side of college athletics? Uh, what's been one of the uh, more interesting, unique aspects, or maybe something you didn't know about, or ways you helped impact this football team? Well, I think uh, a couple of things. First of all, uh, um, I, I, I would have to say that being the athletic director, uh, I, I was out a year and a half. Uh, 2010 was my last football season, and then I came back here in uh, 2013, in the spring of 13. But <clears throat> that, those five years that I spent as athletic director I kind of saved me uh, in the fact that uh, – I probably really wasn't ready to quit coaching yet. I know I wasn't. I wanted to coach again, uh, but that wasn't uh, wasn't in the plan. And uh, I had the opportunity uh, to be the athletic director here. We had a lot of young coaches, not just in football, but in all of our sports. And uh, it gave me an opportunity to, uh, uh, in in one respect, coach the coaches. And uh, I, you know, I appreciate it. I, I I got to understand a lot more about how decisions are made from the administrative side and uh, um, by being involved in, in those administrative meetings, uh, you know, with the, uh, you know, with your uh, high end uh, uh, administrative people right. and uh, the appreciation of budget and all that. So uh, uh, I learned a lot. Um, and I think uh, my experience, I felt like my experience helped, uh, you know, helped our younger coaches appreciate some of the things, understand some of the things, uh, you know, by the time I was athletic director, we had great facilities in, in football. Mm -hmm. We didn't have them in all of our sports. And I, uh, I would have to take uh, some of the younger coaches uh, in other sports that couldn't quite understand how, you know, why don't we all have great facilities? And then I'd take them down the hallway and show them the picture of the 1998 national championship team uh, pictured in front of a, you know, what would look like a, a bad high school stadium with a, with a little simple scoreboard and, and uh, uh, <clears throat> grass field. So, uh, you know, I had to remind them that it wasn't always that way for football either. And right. uh, uh, I think we made a lot of progress that way. Absolutely. Well, Coach, uh, I want to switch gears here a little bit, um, obviously highlighting your tremendous career. Uh, you had another tremendous opportunity here with the AFCA um, you served as the president of the AFCA in 2006. Uh, you're a four-time AFCA National Coach of the Year winner for us. Uh, why was it important you important for you to be uh, the president of the AFCA? Why did you kind of pursue that opportunity and that role here with the American Football Coaches Association? Well, uh, <clears throat> Mario, first of all, I, 1985 was my first convention. Um, when I was an <clears throat> when I was an assistant, I was never. A member or high school coach, I was not a member of the AFCA. And uh, fortunately, when I went to Austin College, our athletic director was also our head basketball coach, uh, Dr. Bob Mason. And he told me right away, he said, uh, you're going to be involved in national organizations. And uh, he said, you need to go to the AFCA convention. I didn't even know what the AFCA convention really was. Uh, my defensive coordinator, Bas Van Vance Morris, had been to several conventions. And so in 85, we went to the national convention and uh, I think it was in Nashville. It was my first one. And uh, uh, from that point on, I was, I was sold. And uh, this is what I wanted to do. And uh, at that time, the NAIA was not, uh, we did not, we weren't part of the governance of the AFCA, but the AFCA allowed us to have our meetings uh, in conjunction. And uh, I worked, uh, I became president of the NAIA coaches association, I think in the, in the early nineties. And then, uh, uh, when <clears throat> when I moved to Northwest Missouri, uh, one of one of, one of my good friends uh, in, in uh, uh, going back a ways was uh, Coach Ron Skipper, uh, who was a coach at Central College in uh, in Pella, Iowa. Uh, coach Skipper was on the board and served as president of the AFCA. He was the one that kind of pushed me. And uh, after the '98 championship season, I remember him coming up to me uh, at the '99 convention saying, uh, "Hey." Uh, just so you know, uh, you, you've been nominated and you're going to be uh, uh, invited to be part of the AFCA Board of Trustees. And uh, that was a huge thrill for me. And it was really uh, special to hear that from him. So that, that's how I got started. Coach, that's amazing. Uh, kind of <laughs> from start to your way, your journey through it. Um, on top of your experiences of being a president and, uh, you know, your role there with the NAI prior to the NAI been uh, working in conjunction with the AFCA, uh, as far as the educational opportunity, how, how have you kind of viewed the AFCA in terms of that educational uh, standpoint and how, how did you sharpen your tools by going there as a coach? 
Well, I, you know, you're, you're surrounded by <clears throat> by so many great coaches. And, uh, you know, on the Board of Trustees, uh, the majority of the coaches are Division I. Uh, but uh, the thing that I appreciated about the people that I served with on the Board of Trustees, it didn't make any difference if you were uh, Division One, Division Two two or division three, there was a mutual respect, uh, you know, among the coaches and, and uh, you had that opportunity to share there, but then the conventions, uh, the conventions were outstanding to, to me, uh, you know, the opportunity to, uh, to sit in on and, and hear the other coaches, uh, some of the great coaches lecture and uh, talk and, and just being around them and seeing how they, they, they handled themselves uh, with other people and with other coaches. Uh, that was tr- a tremendous learning experience for me. And then, uh, you know, the opportunity to work with Coach Taff at that time. Uh, Coach Taff was, uh, was a tremendous leader. And, uh, uh, you know, I learned a lot from him, I think, just uh, on how to deal with people and how to handle yourself in, uh, in different situations. Uh, you know, I always, uh, what I always admired about him, he, he always stayed cool. You know, he, he was in some tough situations in some of our meetings where we didn't all agree. And, uh, he always kept things under control. And, uh, you know, so I learned a lot about that from him as well. Well, coach, before I let you go, I just wanted to kind of get a a little line from you. It's, uh, our hundredth year convention. So we've had a hundred of them. What sounds pretty awesome is you've been about one fourth of them. It sounds like at the very least. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, just, just in light of it being our hundredth, uh, uh, convention, just, you know, just drop a quick line about what the AFC kind of, kind of means to you, the convention means to you. I know you mentioned that already here, but if you could, even if you repeat yourself from what you said earlier, just something uh, 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 to remember this 100th year. Well, well, there, there's so many things about the convention. You know, I, I mentioned the things about the uh, uh, <clears throat> about the lectures and the, the, all the opportunities you have to learn from other coaches. But one of the highlights for me every year is just seeing coaches from all over the country that you don't get to see any other time. Some of my best friends are people from – uh, you know, from uh, the East Coast, from the West Coast, and, and you see him once a year. Uh, Ken Sparks, uh, who was the longtime head coach at Carson Newman, we played twice in the national championship game. We became very close friends. And, it, you know, it was a chance for us to be together. And Larry Karras, the, the coach at Mount Union, Larry and Linda, our wives were always together. Uh, <clears throat> my wife uh, was very active in the Wives Association. As a matter of fact, she served as president of the Wives Association. And so, <clears throat> we, you know, it was kind of like a family deal for us to go to the convention and it still is. I mean, we, uh, Carol and I are not going to miss the convention. We're going to be there. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, because of those relationships you build. And, uh, and then, uh, besides that, uh, with my career, uh, I've got a lot of guys now that I coached, uh, that coach with me that are head coaches that are coaching at different places. And that's an opportunity for us to all get, get together uh, and kind of share our stories for the year and, uh, you know, see each other. And so uh, all those things combined really make uh, make the AFCA a great organization and conventions uh, is the highlight of it as far as I'm concerned. Well, Coach, we appreciate your role in making the AFCA a great organization. Uh, you know, been a president for us, a representative national coach of the year, uh, lifetime achievement award winner, all the things that you've done. We appreciate what you've done from that aspect, and I personally appreciate you for what you've done for our great profession, all the young people that had the opportunity to come through your program, experience success both on and off the field. Uh, you know, it, it definitely doesn't go unnoticed. So thanks so much for your time today. Well, thanks for having me, Mario. I'm uh, looking forward to the convention in, uh, in 2022. Yes, sir. Look forward to seeing you down here in San Antonio. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Inside the Headset. If you heard anything on this episode that you would like to learn more information about, head over to afcapodcast.com where you can find every episode and all of the corresponding show notes. While you're there, take a second to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for the show, please let us know by sending an email to podcast at afca.com. Make sure to follow the podcast on Twitter at Inside the Headset and tag it when you share each episode. You can stay up to date with all things AFCA by following the at we are AFCA Twitter account. Every episode of Inside the Headset can also be found on your favorite audio streaming platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. If you are not currently a member of the AFCA, 
Be sure to find us online at AFCA.com and apply to join over 10,000 NFL, college, and high school coaches from around the country who are striving to be the best they can be. With an AFCA membership, you gain invaluable access to the annual AFCA convention, the bi-monthly magazine, and the new and improved digital library, which contains thousands of videos and articles contributed by hundreds of current and former football coaches. You can also visit AFCAinsider.com to sign up for our free weekly email newsletter on the right-hand side of the screen. It comes out every Tuesday at lunch and is filled with great articles and stories written by many of the same coaches you hear on the podcast. It's geared to help you become a better coach tomorrow than you are today. Be sure to connect with me on Twitter at Coach Mario Price. And remember, the AFCA is not just an annual convention. It is an association that continually promotes education, guidance, and networking. But it is also so much more than that. The AFCA is about celebrating the past and educating the future. It is about developing great coaches who will produce great teams and even better people. So invest in your skill set and impact today by engaging with the AFCA.